So, the next step in the process is to create the roofs on the building. We'll be creating two separate roofs to give our building a bit more of a unique look. I'll do this from the first floor plan. There are a few ways to create roofs in Revit. For this project, we'll look at creating a roof by footprint. Adding a roof to a building by footprint in Revit is almost exactly like creating floors. We'll begin by creating the lower roof. I'll click the roof by footprint icon on the home tab of the ribbon. Now, like everything else in Revit, the properties are incredibly important. The most important property here is the level. Make sure this is set to lower roof. I'm in the first floor plan and Revit might try by default to create the roof on the first floor level, clearly not what we want. So I'll change the level to lower roof on the drop down menu. Also, let's specify the roof type. I'll select Edit Type and make a selection from the Type Selection drop-down. Let's use a generic 12-inch for now, all right? And I'll leave the rest of the properties at the defaults. Next, I'm required to sketch the footprint of the roof. Since we have walls that we can pick, the best way to do this is by using Pick Walls. I want the roof boundary to run along the inside edge of the masonry wall. Now, I just need to close up the boundary. I use the Trim and Extend tools to do this. Now, you probably also noticed these triangle icons here. These determine the slope or pitch of the roof. Right now, there's one triangle icon for each line. If I click one of the lines to select it, notice in the properties, there's a checkbox that determines whether the line defines the roof slope and underneath, there is a dimension value for the slope. If I uncheck the Defines Roof Slope checkbox, you can see the triangle icon disappears. I only want one line to govern the slope, so I'll select these line segments and uncheck the box. Next, I'll adjust the slope of the line that still governs the pitch. I'll select the roof segment and make it 2 inches over 12 inches. Finally, before clicking the green check, I'll either manually click and drag the footprint so that it extends slightly beyond the edges of the exterior walls to create a little overhang on the roof, or I can specify an overhang value in the properties. I'll add overhangs for these three edges here. And once the profile looks good, I'll click the check to finish the roof. Next, let's repeat the process for the upper roof. Make sure you're creating this roof on the upper roof level. I'll create the boundary again using pick walls. When I choose the walls, I want this boundary to use the same edge of the masonry wall as the lower roof. Trim and extend is the way to go to clean it up. Again, I only want one edge to define the slope, but this time I'll have the opposite edge define the roof slope, and I'll set the slope value to 3 inches over 12 inches. You can set the slope and overhangs from either the properties or directly in the workspace. Both will have the same effect. I'll again give the three edges not attached to the masonry wall a bit of an overhang. You can create the overhang by manually clicking and dragging like I did earlier, but also notice there's a property for the line segment that you can use to specify the overhang as well. When I click the green check, the roof is added. But, as you can see, when I switch to 3D view, The walls don't extend all the way up to the roof. We'll have to attach them manually. This is really easy, no problem. I'll select a wall, and on the ribbon, I'll choose the Attach Top and Base icon. Next, I'll select the roof, 
Right away, the wall adjusts and now extends flush with the roof. I'll repeat this process for the rest of the exterior walls, and the best way to do this is by using the tab key to select the chain all at once. Now I also want to attach the interior second floor walls to the roof. To make this easier, I'll first make the roof transparent. I'll right click on the roof and select Override Graphics and View by Element. I'll enable the transparent checkbox, with the roof now transparent, I can select all the interior walls and attach them in the same exact way. With the walls attached, I'll turn off the transparency on the roof, I'll right-click it, and select Override in View, by Element, uncheck the transparent box, and click OK.